Hi, this is Vicki with Learning Home Volunteers, and this video will cover the activities for the first week of the Thanksgiving learning session. This whole week is going to be focused on exploration, so let's take a look at some of the um, activities that fall into this first week. We have devised a pumpkin exploration experiment to provide your child a chance to practice being a scientist. We've included in your box a two-page sheet to record their exploration. The sheet includes multiple attributes about the pumpkin to record. You want to do the first sheet before you cut the pumpkin open. Um, the cool part about the attributes that are being collected, they can all be done without cutting the pumpkin open. In fact, they can even take the pumpkin into the bath to see if it floats. How fun will that be? The second sheet is about the inside of the pumpkin, and this phase of the experiment really lends itself to adult-led questions. You should have them guess what they think the inside's going to look like. Is it going to be completely filled? Is it going to be hollow? Is it going to be orange or green? What do they think it's going to smell like? Um, all of those questions will help them try to imagine what's inside, and I bet their imagination is going to be perfect. It'll be pretty cool. Um, but don't throw your pumpkin away when you're done because there's so much more we can do with a pumpkin after it's done with the experiment. The first thing is that the pumpkin is a sugar pumpkin, which means it can be eaten. Um, so we're going to post a recipe up for you to try during the week. Um, so um, you might want to save that and see what they think of pumpkin. Pumpkin's actually eaten in a lot of cultures as a wonderful, fibrous, sweet treat. Um, and then save your seeds. If you have anywhere to put them or plant them next year, you can just put them in the dirt in the summer and then water them. And in early fall, you'll have another set of pumpkins all ready to do. And what an adventure it would be to see the great growing cycle of pumpkins with your child. Or if you don't have any place to to plant things, we can certainly roast the pumpkin seeds and eat them. And a recipe will be posted later this week to show you how to roast pumpkin seeds. The corn and the pumpkins were actually a gift from one of our donors, Barbara. And the corn, or the pumpkins, we knew were coming, but the corn was definitely a surprise. The corn is really so fun. Each of the kernels is a seed each capable of creating a new corn plant, um, which will give us many uh, ears of corn per plant. Um, getting the kernels off the corn is a great fine motor um, activity for your child. They're, it's not that easy, so they're gonna have, it'll be a challenge for them. And once the kernels are off, they can be sorted by color and counted. And after all of that's done, you can use those kernels to pop corn or to grind them up and make masa. Um, either way will be a, a fun next step uh, for the corn. Um, we're excited about these cute little bean bags that look just like uh, pumpkins, which were made by one of our volunteers, Marilyn. Um, when you play this beanbag bowling game, you want to set your uh, toilet paper rolls up in the shape of the V like you see on the right-hand side. And then they throw the beanbags, trying to knock over as many toilet paper rolls as they can. Um, you can count how many got knocked over, and if you want to play for points, um, you can get a point for each of them that's knocked over. To make the game more difficult, um, you're going to have to have them try to hit a specific paper toilet paper roll so that could be you know the red one or it's the one with the letter T this will require a lot more control in the throwing and more planning on their approach on a side note I took a set of these home and we've been playing with them on the table uh, which I thought would be really fun and um, we've been sliding it on the table instead of throwing it um, but the cats really liked the game and uh, now are attacking the toilet paper rolls as we set them up as an active participant. It's gotten a lot more complicated playing. I just didn't expect to have so many players. Well, let's talk about the next things, which are the vocabulary cards all about turkeys. I love these cards. Um, you'll find them in a labeled bag on the ring. 
Um, if it's easier for your child to work with the cards off the ring, feel free to take them off. The reason we have them on the ring is because it keeps the um, cards all together when they come back, which is great, and it keeps them from getting crinkled. Um, and who would have thought a picture, the single picture of the turkey, um, could, could teach us so many words? This first card, which shows a turkey all in its glory, and then when we see the second and subsequent cards, we'll see uh, the word that they're trying to teach us um, in color and all the rest of it in black and white. In this one, um, they're looking at the wing. But I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about some of those fancy words that you're going to see on the card. You know, children uh, don't know the difference between a large you know, a large word or a special word or a scientific word. They don't know the word is big. To them, it's just a new word. And they can easily learn a word like snood just as easy it is to learn a word like brown. It's the same to them. And adding vocabulary that c creates density in the language, like knowing all the parts of a bird or all the parts of your body gives them a lot more um, capability to express what they want to be able to do and to be precise about it. Um, so I encourage you to let them learn the word snood and uh, the waddle and all of the other good words that we have about turkeys. I think um, they'll enjoy it. The next activity is these memory cards, and I've already talked about the benefits of memory games. I think if the highlights is really to remember that it's working on improving focus and working memory. Working memory is such an important part as they go into school um, because the teacher is talking and teaching multiple things at the same time in their words before they get a chance to do something with those. And she or he expects them to be able to remember all those pieces. The larger the child's working memory is, the more complex of the things that they'll be able to uh, remember and to more complex problems they'll be able to work on. So anything that we can do to kind of increase their working memory when they're little um, just makes it that much easier for them to learn during school. Um, we are working on a memory game that has both pictures and words, which is kind of nice because we get the vocabulary plus a visual representation of what that means. Um, they're played in uh, with matching pairs. So if you decide that you would like to play with a small number of pairs, I would start off with four or five pairs arranged in a grid and shuffle them up so they don't sit right next to each other. And then for a turn, what you'll do is turn two cards over at a time and look at them. Give them as much time as they want to be able to see it. Obviously, if they match, yay, okay, we're good, we got one. If they don't match, then they need to turn them back over and then choose two more. As they get more opportunity to kind of visually place the things in the grid, they'll get better and better at being able to find its match. So when they become to master that, just add more cards and it'll make it more complicated. If they're really struggling with the cards, uh, take out a pair and um, it'll make it less complicated. But you know, you can also play these as uh, playing cards, shuffle them up, deal them out to people, and then you can play it like go fish. So the person whose turn it is gets to ask someone else that they're playing with, uh, do you have the, you know, a specific card that they have in their hand? And if not, it's the next person's turn, they have to pick up one, and then you continue to play until all the pairs are matched up. A lot of flexibility in these memory cards, and they're a great tool. Um, you can make them out of cardboard um, with basically anything. Um, and it's a wonderful thing for you and your child to work on at home. Our next activity are these fabulous counting cards. Again, they're on a ring. Um, and you should also find a set of mini erasers that are in there. Feel free to remove them from the ring. Um, I love that these uh, counting cards are laminated, thanks so much Barbara, uh, because it provides us with more ways to use the cards. So here are some of those ways. Well, one, you can practice by using a dry eraser marker by writing on the card itself. They can practice writing their letters, 
on the bottom and up on the top their print numbers. Um, once they finish tracing those they can wipe it off with the felt uh, cloth in your teaching kit. You can put the right number of mini erasers which match the number or the print number um, or with a prompt of saying the word. Mix it up. Give them an opportunity to uh, try each of those things. Recognize the word, the print number, or how many are actually in the wagon already. These cards provide both the print number, the word, and a representation of those objects. Um, so you can obviously use the cards just like they are. You can ask them to count the number of pumpkins and then point out the other two representations. And understand that all of these representations, the, the pumpkins in the wagon, the print number, and the word, are all symbols which they have to figure out to decipher. I like that we're presenting, representing them and presenting them all at the same time because then they get to know that each of those different symbols all represent the same thing and that you can have multiple symbols representing the same thing. You can also try starting with the number 10 and demonstrate how we can count down 10, 9, 8. So much of the work that we do with numbers with the little ones is starting with the number 1 and increasing the number of units, which is the main premise of addition. But we would also like to demonstrate that when we go from a bigger number to a smaller number, it's really subtracting the, num the number of pumpkins that are on there that that still represents an obfuscate sequence that is just as valid as co is counting up. You can put two cards down um, like the number three or the number uh, five and then ask the child which has more pumpkins which has less and this will work on inequities between numbers. Um, you can also mix up the cards and ask them to put them in order uh, from 1 to 10 or from 10 to 1. So many things to do with these little sets of county cards. Lots of opportunities to um, have math um, facts that they can actually learn. Our last activity is uh, the sessions Play-Doh exploration which comes in a plastic container. We would love to have that container back so we can use it again. The materials in the container are for you to use and keep. These Play-Doh explorations usually have a prompt to spark the child's response in Play-Doh. And the prompt I'd like to use this time is make something that flies. No matter um, what the child makes, whether it's an airplane or a bird or a superhero or a bug, all of those things fly. And when we ask them to make something that flies, we're actually asking them to explore in their mind um, what kinds of things actually fly and then to, to put that into some sort of concrete thing. You can see Jacob here made a turkey and another creation that has feathers for hair. Perhaps it flies like a helicopter by twirling its feathers. I don't know. I didn't get to see it fly. There are two kinds of Play-Doh in the container, one with a scent and one without. I love with these sensory materials that we offer many different kinds of textures and scent if we can. Um, it gives them lots of opportunity to explore with their hands, their eyes, their nose. Uh, so that they can actually um, be able to experience many different kinds of things as they create. Well, this completes all the activities for this week. Um, and stand by for the activities for next week, which should be published on Monday. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this week's activities.